Today, I want to speak to you about a wonderful theme about the king in his beauty. I'm going to read you from Isaiah chapter 33, verse 17, which reads thus. Your eyes will see the king in his beauty. They will see the land that is very far off. Isaiah 33 is filled with warning to sinners and promised blessings to saints. It's presented in the larger context of God's promised deliverance to Judah from the fearful Assyrian threat. Yet, as is common in the prophets, God used this promised deliverance from the Assyrians to speak also regarding the ultimate deliverance for God's people, the great deliverance brought by their Messiah. In describing this, Isaiah gave a wonderful promise. Your eyes will see the king in his beauty. They will see the land that is very far off. Now again, this promise was a contrast to the coming judgment upon the wicked. Though judgment would come, nevertheless the Lord would bless his righteous ones. As described in the context, they would have a place of defense, a fortress, and bread and water would not fail them. But far above these material blessings, they would see the king in his beauty. In the most immediate sense, this referred to Hezekiah, who God used to rescue Judah from the Assyrian threat. But in the ultimate sense, it refers to our beautiful Savior, Jesus Christ. Beyond all material glory, splendor, and comfort of heaven, this is the greatest glory of heaven, not to be personally glorified, but to see the King in his beauty. It isn't only seeing the king, it's seeing him in his beauty. It can be said that we occasionally catch a glimpse of our King Jesus, and even sometimes we have a glance at his beauty, but the highest experience we could ever have now is nothing compared to what we will experience when we see the king in his beauty. Paul said of our present experience, For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. That's in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 12. Today, when we look into a good mirror, the image is clearer, but in the ancient world, mirrors were made out of polished metal, and the image was always unclear and somewhat distorted. We see Jesus now only in a dim, unclear way, like an ancient mirror made of polished metal. But one coming day, we will see him with perfect clarity. Friend, heaven is precious to us for many reasons. We long to be with loved ones who have passed before us and whom we miss so dearly. We long to be with the great men and women of God who have passed before us in centuries past. We want to walk the streets of gold to see the pearly gates, to see the angels around the throne of God worshiping Him day and night. However, none of those things, as precious as they are, Make heaven really heaven. What makes heaven really heaven is the unhindered, unrestricted presence of our Lord. And to see the King in His beauty, that will be the greatest experience of your eternal existence. Part of the beauty of the King in heaven will be the scars that He retains from His suffering for our sake on this earth. After Jesus rose from the dead in his glorified body, his body uniquely retained the nail prints in his hands and the scar on his side. In Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10, Jesus spoke prophetically of the day when the Jewish people turned to him, would see him in glory. It says this, Then they will look upon me whom they have pierced. Yes, they will mourn for him as one mourns for his only son and grieve for him as one grieves for a firstborn. 
Zechariah chapter 13, verse 6 continues that thought. It reads like this, And one will say to him, What are these wounds between your arms? Then he will answer, Those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. The important thing to remember is that none of those scars will be taken away or will take away in the slightest regard from the beauty of the king. Those scars will only make him more beautiful. Indeed, that land for us, just like Isaiah said in chapter 33, verse 17, it is very far off, but it's not so far that you can't think upon it, hope in it, and thank God for it today. Hey, today, remember the fact, you have a beautiful king.